Hello, hello, and welcome to the Introverted Manager. Today I will be talking about how to extract data from Jira, the very popular tool for task tracking, directly to Power BI without utilizing any additional tools. Being a project manager, I often worked with Jira, and it was often the case that I needed to analyze the data that my team generated within Jira, sometimes combining with data from other systems that are used within the company. For this case, at some point, I even wrote Python script to extract the data on a daily basis. But today, I will show you how to do it directly in Power BI. So let's dive right in. Before we start setting things up in Power BI, you will need to do initial setup in Jira. For that, you will have to be logged in with your account. Once you do, navigate to Settings, to Atlassian Account Settings. There, switch to Security tab and navigate to API Tokens. Specifically, create and manage API Token. Here, we'll need to create new API Token that we'll be using instead of your password, which is good for security. You don't want to expose your password. And with API tokens, it's quite easy to revoke it if you expose it somewhere, as I will be doing in this video right now. Once you generated new API token, make sure to copy that string somewhere and save it away for a second. You will need it once we start setting things up in Power BI. Of course, I will revoke this one, so don't try to use it. Now to Power BI. As you can see, I have example prepared here already. As a project manager, I often wanted to see breakdown of where we spend in time in the project, which issues, epics, etc. Therefore, it, it was often the case that I wanted to retrieve all the issues in the project and all the associated workloads, the time logged by people into those issues. So let's today review how to approach this case and extract the data directly into Power BI. Because we will be doing multiple queries to API, separate ones, what I like to do is store some common string, strings separately so I can reuse them within those API requests, namely instance URL and project name. So you can navigate to manage parameters, create new parameter, As you can see here, I have two already. Switch type to text and add your URL. I will not be doing that because I have them already prepared. Now, let's navigate to query issues. The first thing that I do is I'm defining some constants that will be used later within the functions or the code that is here. Namely, instance URL, already saw the parameter that I created, so I'm just querying that constant, that parameter that I defined. Jira projects or project that I'm working with and would like to extract issues from, in my case, it's BBD. Again, shared parameter bet between multiple queries. Jira expand, so, with expand. Whenever you query Jira, it allows you to specify which fields you would like to get as response. This is expand. You can actually go to documentation and find more details about that if you want to. But we'll not be diving into that right now. You can review documentation for that. In this case, I would like to get standard fields that Jira is working with, the ones that you see when you open the issue on screen. The way it is called is rendered fields. So it's specified here already. Next thing is max results. This will depend on 
the server and its configuration. It can vary from 10 to 50 to 100 to 1000. Sound solvent is a maximum allowed. But it's often the case that actually server is configured to provide 100 results or even less in the in API response. Here, I specify maximum possible, but once we query API, it will respond to us with what it actually can give us. And from there, we will be using server configuration. Here, I'm just specifying the maximum possible. If it matches, it matches. If it doesn't match, my code will be using the actual number that the API will respond with. So don't worry about that. Let's move on. And here I'm reconstructing the base URL or API query, which is instance URL, then REST API part. And then in this case, it's JQL query. Basically, I would like to query all of the issues in spite of the type, issue type, all of them in one list. So what I'm doing is I'm searching and going through all whole project. And then I'm adding additional parameters to my API call. Expand, which I mentioned already, and max results, which I mentioned already. Let's move on to next function. In the next function, actually, that's where I'm getting the max results, the one that server responds with. And let me show you how the response looks like in Postman. And let's query the API. Actually, let me switch that to Southern so you see what we'll get in return. Despite me specifying 1000, here, as you can see, API responds that the max result is 100. This is the maximum allowed per server configuration. There are three total issues and it can provide us with 100 per API response. And then information about the issues. That's what we will be working with. Besides that, for expand, usually API call or API response, in the API response, you can find what is allowed to expand. Operations, version meta, change log, custom fields, rendered fields. That's what I am using, rendered fields, the standard fields from Jira. Let's go back to Power BI. So in this function, again, I'm querying base URL, which we reconstructed here. I'm getting JSON from that URL. And in that JSON, I'm looking for max results, which contains that number. That's what I'm getting here and storing away in results per page. I will be using that later. And here, as you can see, I'm initializing that variable to make it available across whole code and assigning results from that function, which retrieves max results. Now let's move on to next function that is here. Get JSON. This is the one that will be getting the data for us for each page in the response. So it queries the URL that we will give it and then just takes JSON and stores it away. It's a simple function. Let's move on to the next one. This is the one that uh, finds the total count of issues in the API response. This is the one that will later be used to calculate how many pages do we need to query or iterate through. 
So again, it's using the base URL that we constructed earlier. It gets the JSON. And in this case, instead of max results, it gets total, which sh shows us how many issues there is in the project. The next one is the one that actually retrieves the data about issues and pagin paginates. If you haven't watched my video about paginated APIs, and there were three of those, I will leave a link in the description and you probably will see it somewhere on screen. So I will not be diving deep here, but you can watch other videos to understand how to work with different kinds of paginated APIs. Anyways, in this case, we need to offset each page. That's what this function is working with. It receives an index and then provides or reconstructs base URL and adds there start at that offset. As you can see here, yes. Here it reconstructs the whole URL. The base URL that you already seen plus skip or offset to query correct result or correct page. Pagination itself happens later. We'll arrive to that. Once it queries correct page, it gets the JSON, it gets issues part from the JSON response that's where all the information about the issues is stored and stores away. This is the part where we actually do the pagination, this one. What happens here is that I take the total amount of issues and calculate how many pages do I need to paginate through by dividing it with results that the API can respond with. In our case, it was 100. So if you have 900 issues, it means I need to paginate through nine pages. And it will create indices for all of these pages. Starting from zero, that's why you see here page count minus one, because you start counting from zero. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in total. Once it created that list, it executes get page function for each indice until it iterates through all of them. And once it does, it combines all of the pages together and transforms them, them into a table. That's what you get at the end. As you can see, I have here three results. After that, what I'm doing, I'm not starting transforming it here, but rather just referencing it in another query and transforming it there. I didn't do too much transformation here, but let's do it right now. We have rendered fields, and if you expand it, you can find all of those fields that Jira provides, including the custom ones. Now, let's move on to work logs. It's quite similar, but also a bit different. When it comes to work logs, The important thing here is that by default, Jira will not provide you with work logs. It will provide you with aggregate time estimate or aggregate time span in the result for issues. But if you want to get each work log, you will have to structure your query a bit differently. The difference lies here. Instead of expanding and rendering fields, 
which you need to change query to fields work clock. In this case, Jira will respond with array of work clocks for each issue. The rest of the query is absolutely the same. But now let's look at the difference in the results. So already here I have it queried, but let's go through each step. We expand and here you will have fields, which you need to expand as well. Within those, you will have work clocks, which again, you need to expand, which again, you need to expand. And again, and once you do, you have some fields and mind you, I haven't used all of them here just some of them. So as you can see here, you have the key. I can have an author if I want to, when work clock is created and time spent in seconds, which I can later con uh, convert to hours or whatever I need by making custom column. And that's how you can extract data from Jira directly to Power BI. You can, of course, make different types of requests or query different data, not just what I showed you here. For that, you can navigate to Jira API documentation and see all of the different API that Jira provides, which will allow you to make different requests and extract different data. And that's all for today. Make sure to check out my other videos about extracting data from different kinds of APIs. Subscribe and see you in the next one.